But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Let me welcome. Let me say good morning to our viewers. Good morning to Sly. And good morning to the very good people of the Tamil North constituency. And to yourself, Doc. And let me welcome my brother Sly from the North. I hope that uh, it treated him very well. Um, it's good to see you. Um, I was hoping he would not bring back the discussion that have been had uh, severally, especially after the, you know, presidential primaries of the New Patriotic Party. But somehow he has uh, brought it back, and it has to do with no you, and it has to do with the fact that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the first entrant to have won 61% of the, you know, votes. Uh, in his first attempt to lead the new patriotic party that's true but what is also true is that um, no one in his first attempt that has won has ever been a certain vice president <laughs> that's also true i mean none of the examples that you gave you know contested when there were certain vice presidents so don't 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 underestimate so if you are late, don't underestimate don't underestimate the, the 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 power of the you know presidency and i'm sure it was based on that power of the presidency that uh, his own team projected and predicted that they were going to win by 75 percent i mean by by their estimations um, it, it, the lowest mark was to be 75 percent that's what they estimated and for me it's such a shame that he had to struggle the way he did um, to 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 beat um, somebody and with all due respect to honorable kennedy Japan, but somebody that until now if you were asked to list uh, some of the unserious people in the mpp uh, would have been on that list like i said like, with all respect to kennedy Ajabo, any fair-minded person who was asked until now until now who was asked to list you know some of the unserious people in the mpp would have so listed you, kennedy as, Ajabo, as, as, a, as, a, as part of, of pants please yeah, yeah, don't do that don't, don't start that. don't start please, that don't, don't, don't start that don't 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 let, us, let us continue smoothly the way i allowed you to flow because you know i can interject you know that you know i can interject so allow me to please please can i can i if you stop this the show won't end well i'm just so don't just go say that but i'm no no i mean when i had disagreements with you i allowed you to finish and so you should but also, okay, but should also behave like a gentleman, gentleman. Well, you have, well but your party is a public you know institution is that, i mean it's a public entity well, they comment about you know so you can you don't you don't you don't you don't you don't do that behave like a gentleman you let us have you a gentleman so the point the point affect. the point that i'm making is that it is it is it is a shame that dr mahmoud baumia had to struggle you know against a contender like Kennedy Japan, who until recently was not, you know, um, rated as one of the, you know, if you like, big shots to lead the new patriotic party in, in the nearest future. So for me, that should serve as some, you know, moment of reflection for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to begin to wonder how the race would have been if he was to come up against, you know, some of the stalwarts or people who have always been known to be, you know, presidential materials in the NPP, and he didn't have the vice president's, uh, you know, uh, cloak around him and the resources and the leverage around him, uh, how the race would have been. So uh, it's neither here nor there to say that the first time entry and he made 61 percent against who and with what advantage has he only been able to get the 61 percent that is how to do a fair analysis and i can understand your uh, zealousness to uh, justify your inclusion uh, by the trip uh, that you made to the north with dr mahmoud Baumia and maybe 
the interjections that you will uh, put up here to show you know strong support because like Randy at your constituency didn't deliver and so you have to uh, overdo yourself to show that you belong uh, that is the only way perhaps the system will not come after you during your primaries and I wish you well uh, during your primaries even though I'm very confident that that seat uh, is coming back to the NDC uh, after the 2024 general elections. But one thing that you said that I am impressed about is the advice that you say the overlord of Mampurugu gave the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, that he should strive to be president for all and that he should reach out uh, even to his Kusasi brothers. That's what he said. And I think that is the true mark of the wise king, you know, the uh, Mampurugu king. He has always exuded dignity and, and, and wisdom. And so I'm not surprised that he will offer his son, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, this advice. Perhaps he has followed some of his utterances and some of his uh, posturing. Posturing that I believe also recently led to the National Peace Council issuing a statement to caution all politicians when I think the caution would have been better directed at the Vice President to uh, act in ways that we do not threaten as politicians in our political conversations the peace and harmony that we have enjoyed over the years, despite our differences and our diversity, uh, especially when it comes to ethnicity or religion. Because clearly, Randy, I have said that on other platforms. I've said on other platforms that we have been toying with this for a very long time, and the NPP, forgive me, has been leading this attempt to introduce ethnicity and, and, and religion into our politics for a very long time now. They have been doing it subtly, and perhaps we have all been asleep, and we have never really considered the danger of the NDC responding to you know the ethnic and religious politics that the NDC have I and mean, the NPP has been doing. Randy, I'll take you to history a bit. History that you are very well aware of. In 1992, Prasa Edibuahim picked Araya Hassan from the north and highlighted Texas. In 96, President John Adekunkufo picked Arajani Muhammad as his running mate and projected it. Then, in 2000, he repeated him. You have an apple for the following line, also picking Dr. Mahmoud Baromia and projected say. So, clearly, they have always projected the choice of running mate from the north and from you know, uh, the Muslim community are seek to say that it is a reason to mobilize. Mobilize around religion, mobilize around ethnicity, mobilize around pe where people are coming from. Now, if you compare that to the NDC, and I'm saying that the NDC has de-emphasized that for a very long time, and perhaps that is why we never really saw it to be a problem. But a pushback from the NDC now makes it look like it's a problem. And the pushback has become necessary because of the conduct of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia especially. And that is why I am happy that the Nariwe gave him the advice that he gave him to act about what and you know promise to be president for all if you know the Alex, if he ever gets to the, the, the presidency. The NDC in the fourth republic with President Rawlings first chose Akar, both sadness, 
both presidents. It was never an issue in the NDC. Moving forward, he chose Professor Mills. Both thumbnails, both accounts, never an issue. Then came Martin Amino. First time from the north, both Christians do. Not an issue. Then came John Mahama. From the north, both Christians. Not an issue. Then you have John Mahama choose Pakistan and Zata. Both Christians, one from the south, one from the north. That wasn't necessarily their, their, their religion and where they come from were not the, the, the considerations that emphasis was placed on when they were considered to lead the NEC. And that has been the trend in the NEC because in the NEC, the God we worship or where you come from is not emphasized when it comes to giving you leadership roles or responsibilities. And that is how it should be across board. That is how our politics should be. Making religion and ethnicity political conversation points has shown in other countries to be very dangerous. But over the years, with what I have just told you, it is clear that the NPP subtly have toyed with that issue of making religion and where people come from a conversational point in our politics. Now, it has become worse because Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, when he was chosen as running mate, suggested to Muslim communities that there was a need to create a balance at the presidency. So when the president swears with the Bible, he swears with the Quran, and then there's a balance because that's how we've always lived in this country. Those were his campaign, you know, that, that was a campaign trajectory. Today, we have all seen the video clip where he has met Muslim clerics and told them that he was only chosen because he's a Muslim. And so those Muslim clerics should rise up to help him make history. That's what I'm saying that the National Peace Council's advice should have been very straightforward either to the NPP or to the flag bearer of the NPP. Because when you say this and then the NDC pushes back, that is when the danger now becomes very palpable for all to see. But why why should we have somebody, you know, present himself in that manner? So to make religion and ethnicity a conversation point in our politics. What is essential? It's what people who choose to put themselves up for leadership, either in the NDC or the NPP, are able to do to transform the lives of the people, no matter where they come from and no matter the God they worship. It is about the improvement in our lives and in our communities. And I can sit here, that's why the fact that the NDC has never really put forward a, a, a Muslim, you know, a, a, a pres president or, 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 or running mate, and tell you the development that the NDC has championed in the Muslim communities. And we talk about the holy days that Muslims enjoy today. And it wasn't introduced by a Muslim vice president or a Muslim president. Talk about the Islamic unit. That is ensuring that education, you know, grows in the uh, Muslim communities. And it wasn't introduced by a vice president who was a Muslim or a president who was a Muslim. Talk about the improvement we currently see in Hajj operations. And it was under Professor Mills and John Ramani Mama. It didn't have to take a vice president who was Muslim or a president who was Muslim to do that. The vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, has been in office. He campaigned on the fact that he was Muslim. What tangible thing has he done that, you know, he can beat his chest and say that his representation of Muslims at the presidency has yielded these results to the communities that are predominantly dominated by Muslims? 
not even the issue of wearing hijab to workplaces that former President Mahama spoke about, has he ever had the courage to really speak of publicly? Not even that. So, for me, I'm happy that the Nairo gave him that advice. That's his son, and the Nairo has always exuded wisdom and a lot of dignity. So I'm not surprised that he gave him that advice, that you go out there and present yourself as a candidate and when elected can be president for all. Right. I'm in the TV. Now, so far, so good. Say, open online portal, a work Ghana. Now, you can share, you can follow, you can comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I'm in TV.